The O6E terminal posts are made up of several components. Jam nut 1 locks the terminal post in the terminal plate. Jam nut 2 secures the black plastic insulator. Jam nut 3 secures the jumper bar and the external wiring. Warning. Do not remove the terminal cover to perform this service work because bodily injury or death can result from fire and or explosion if the cover is removed or unsecured before power is disconnected and pressure is relieved. Electric terminal pins may blow out causing injury, fire or death. You must follow the service instructions to relieve pressure before removing the terminal cover. Failure to follow these instructions could result in explosion and injuries. Follow all appropriate safety practices and those found on the compressor terminal box cover. First, disconnect all electrical sources including crankcase heater power and lock and tag the disconnect. Then, shut off the suction and discharge valves to the compressor and recover all refrigerant in the compressor. When the compressor reaches atmospheric pressure, you can remove the terminal box cover. Once the pressure in the compressor is relieved, the terminal plate and gasket may be replaced as follows. First, identify and remove the external wires and the terminal box. Then, loosen and remove the terminal plate cap screws. Pull the old terminal plate out from the crankcase and use the replacement terminal plate to identify each terminal post. Note, these are not numbered in consecutive order. To help orient the terminal plate, look for the word top, which is cast into the plate. If the wires are dark or discolored, it's especially important to mark the wires for later identification and positioning in the replacement terminal plate. Loosen the Allen head screws holding the motor leads to the old terminal plate. Remove the old terminal plate. Check the general condition of the wires. Inspect the wires for damage or insulation breakdown. If they appear severely overheated, the motor or compressor may require replacement. Note, O6D motors are very difficult to replace and replacement motors are not available. Before attaching the wires to their respective terminal posts, clean the old gasket material from the crankcase and install the new gasket. Use guide pins to position and hold the new gasket. The beveled side is up for metal gaskets. Note, metal gaskets do not require oiling. If it's a fiber gasket, first lubricate it lightly with refrigerant oil. Do not soak the gasket in oil. Then identify and insert the wires in their proper terminal posts. Use the Allen wrench to tighten the motor leads to the terminal plate. Torque the screws to proper torque. Be sure the connections are tight because a loose connection will cause a high resistance condition. Remove all wire identification labels and reinstall the terminal plate. Be careful not to pinch or crimp any of the motor leads. Tighten the cap screws and torque to 30 to 35 foot-pounds for O6Es and 16 to 20 foot-pounds for O6Ds. Reinstall the terminal box and external wiring. Torque the external wiring jam nuts. Do not over-tighten the jam nuts because the insulator will crack or break. Evacuate the compressor, then use R22 as a tracer refrigerant and back this up with nitrogen to 20 PSI and leak test the compressor in accordance with standard practices. Then check each terminal post for a grounded condition using a volt ohm meter. Reinstall the terminal box cover. The major points covered in the field servicing section were oil pump bearing head, valve plates and gaskets, valve plate removal and replacement, electrical terminal arrangements, and terminal plate removal and replacement. Troubleshooting. Compressors operate best at certain pressure and temperature conditions. When these conditions vary from the normal, it indicates that a problem exists somewhere in the compressor or in the system. This troubleshooting section will help you to pinpoint a problem area so that you can take the necessary steps to prevent compressor failure. 
One important thing to remember about compressor failures is that they are very often caused by a malfunction somewhere else in the system. Replacing a compressor without determining the cause of the failure can result in a repeat failure. See why compressors fail in the appendix. To ensure proper lubrication to the connecting rod bearings and main bearings, oil pressure should be maintained at a range of 12 to 34 PSIG above suction pressure for both O6D and O6E compressors. As was previously shown, oil pressure varies with conditions and temperatures. Failure to develop oil pressure is an indication of a worn or faulty oil pump and would mean a bearing head replacement. Other causes of insufficient oil pressure are worn main bearings and connecting rod bearings, a stuck oil regulator, or oil dilution. The refrigeration system can also cause oil pressure problems, and these include excessively high operating temperatures, flooded starts, refrigerant floodback, and oil trapping. If the unit you service has an oil pressure safety switch, its function is to protect the compressor against loss of oil and subsequent pressure failure. Switches are set to cut in at 8 to 11 PSIG and set to cut out at 4 to 8 PSIG. Two types of oil pressure safety switches are used on O6D and O6E compressors. Either type will shut the compressor down 120 seconds after startup if oil pressure hasn't been developed. Earlier oil pressure safety switches tripped at 45 seconds. The longer trip point, 120 seconds, is recommended for POE applications. An oil safety switch should never be reset more than once without determining the cause of the oil pressure loss. The maximum crankcase temperature for O6D and O6E compressors should not exceed 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature should be measured on the side of the compressor, as shown. Fasten a thermocouple type thermometer below the oil level to achieve a proper reading. High crankcase temperatures could be caused by a number of factors, such as high compression ratios, high return gas temperature, blown gaskets or broken valves, and long periods of compressor operation in an unloaded condition. On O6Es, a leaking pressure relief valve can be a cause. Typical normal operating temperatures for O6D and O6E compressors are oil temperature, fully loaded, 90 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Unloaded, 90 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Discharge gas, 60 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit above saturated discharge temperature motor barrel temperature 60 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit it can be as high as 150 degrees Fahrenheit with 06 cc models suction gas return temperature for air conditioning duty for the TXV 15 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit for the fixed orifice and EXV 0 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit return gas temperature for refrigerant duty is 30 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Bottom of cylinder head, 80 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. In our discussion on O6E oil return systems, we noted that proper oil level must be maintained at between 1 8 and 3 8 of the sight glass. It is important to maintain the proper oil level to avoid possible mechanical problems that will shorten the life of the compressor. Maintaining proper oil levels also prevents excessive amounts of oil from being circulated through the system. The oil level on O6D compressors should be maintained at one quarter to three quarters of the sight glass. The level should be checked as follows. Older air conditioning duty compressors should be checked immediately after shutdown. Newer air conditioning and all refrigeration duty compressors should be checked after stable operation has been achieved. Higher than normal oil levels could result in mechanical problems or poor system performance. Problems such as continuous running, 
low capacity, or upper cylinder head overheating may be the result of worn or broken valves or blown gaskets. To test for leaking discharge valves, for a blown cylinder head gasket, or for a blown valve plate gasket, first pump the compressor down and observe the suction and discharge pressure equalization. The maximum allowable discharge pressure drop is 3 psi per minute after an initial drop of 10 to 15 psi in the first half minute. If the valves are leaking or a gasket is blown, the pressure will equalize at a faster rate. If the pressure equalization is within limits, perform the next test. With the compressor running, touch the underside of the head or side of head for non-unloading. A hotter than normal temperature will be an indication of a blown gasket. If there's an indication of a loss of capacity and the discharge valves have checked out properly in the first test, remove the valve plate assembly and inspect the suction valves. Note, this test procedure doesn't apply to compressors equipped with pressure actuated or solenoid unloader valves due to their inherent rapid pressure equalization rate. Check the suction and discharge valves by disassembling the valve plate. The maximum discharge temperature should not exceed 275 degrees Fahrenheit when measured approximately 6 inches from the discharge service valve. With POE oil applications, 250 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum recommended temperature. The temperature in the cylinder head can be from 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the temperature measured on the discharge line. Oil breakdown for both petroleum and synthetic based oils occurs at approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It's extremely important to limit the discharge temperatures to well below this level in order to prevent decomposition of the oil and to ensure proper lubrication to all bearing surfaces. Several factors and operating conditions can cause compressor overheating, such as High return gas temperatures can affect the ability of the return gas to absorb motor heat and heat of compression. High compression ratios, which are caused by dirty condensers, high ambience, condenser fan problems, and non-condensables in the system. Motor overheating. Broken discharge valves, which result in cylinder overheating. Blown gaskets and leaking relief valves cause hot gas to recirculate back to the suction side. On low temperature refrigeration units, cylinder head cooling fan is not working. The motor barrel temperature on 06D and 06E compressors should generally not exceed 80 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on application. Note, 06CC compressors may run hotter. Check motor temperatures at the locations shown to ensure a proper measurement. Motor overheating can be caused by current and voltage imbalances, high return gas superheat, improper settings on unloaders and pressure switches, or excess oil in the motor housing. Motor overheating results primarily from voltage and current imbalances. Voltage should not vary more than plus or minus 2%. Current should not vary more than plus or minus 10%. Keep in mind that a voltage imbalance will cause a current imbalance, but a current imbalance does not mean that a voltage imbalance necessarily exists. Mechanical causes for higher motor temperature 